Hello, I'm Michael Curland, CEO and co-founder of Branded Group, an award-winning facility maintenance and construction management company that services multi-site commercial properties, such as retail, restaurants, healthcare facilities, and educational institutions. Welcome to the Be Better podcast. Each week, I interview thought leaders from a variety of industries who will share their stories and the lessons they learn as they strive to be better for their clients, partners, employees, and their community. Are you ready to be better? All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Be Better podcast. I'm your host, Michael Curland. I'm really excited today. We got a good friend of mine to come on the show, and our guest today is Terrell Hanna. Terrell is a facilities manager for the East Coast for Shake Shack, one of the uh, most highest grossing uh, restaurant chains in all the world. Um, so I'm real excited to have you here, Terrell. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit more about yourself? Thank you, Mike, and thank you for that, uh, that really nice uh... intro. Intro. <laughs> thank you, Mike. <laughs> Thanks for the really nice intro. There you go. Um, Hello, everyone. Um, so yes, I'm Terrell Hanna. I'm at Shake Shack. Uh, I'm their East Coast facility manager. And I'm here with Mike Curlin. Thank you for having me, sir. Oh, it's a pleasure, Terrell. And, and uh, for those in the audience that don't know, Terrell and I go way back. We've been friends in the industry. We've actually grown up in the industry together. Uh, I, we were just talking about it off the air. I want to say we've known each other for 12 years, but it might be 13. Uh, I'm good at math, but I just can't remember exactly when we <laughs> met. But you were you were working at Aerosols, the uh, correct and Tease Aerosols, the uh, the shoe the shoe company, and we had a mutual friend, uh, Mike Bernard, that I had worked with at Jones Apparel Group. So he was uh, he, he was a really good construction manager in the shoe industry at the time. Uh, so yeah, it was great. We got to know each other about 12, 13 years ago, and Terrell and I have both uh, grown our careers and gone. Uh, in different paths, but stayed in the same industry. And this, you know, this is that niche industry. So Terrell, thanks for coming on. First question for you. What do you do and why do you do it? Um, well, I provide service, right? I provide support to the restaurants that I manage on the East Coast. Um, with respect to understanding the needs, the wants, and, 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 and for the operations team, as well as the physical plant, right? So. My job is to keep the restaurant running efficiently, keep equipment running efficiently. Um, also involved in all remodels, rollouts, et cetera, et cetera. But that's the primary, my primary task, right? Well, so let's talk about that a little bit more. You work for one of the top grossing revenue restaurants in the entire world, and you do it in the biggest city in the entire world. And you have restaurants that I believe are open 24 seven, correct? Uh, no, we don't. Well, we do in, on, in Vegas. So Vegas, anywhere there's a casino uh, or an airport, we have extended hours. But for the most part, our normal business hours is usually from 10 to 11, 11 p.m. PM. So you have in, in New York City where you're running restaurants, you have you know, I've been to the one on Broadway and it's a line out the door no matter what time of year it is. Uh, right. People people are lining up uh, tourists that, that can't get Shake Shack in, in, their, in their lives and in their countries are, are here in, in New York City to, to try it, the, the famous, the world famous Shake Shack. So you can't have things go down in, in your restaurant because it's just a loss of revenue. So how are you as the facilities manager working to be better to keep that restaurant up and open so that restaurant can service those those customers that have flown all across the world to try that that famous shake burger oh uh, that's a really good question so i think being proactive right you try to be as proactive as possible some things especially in my world is is, is reactive but but you, you try to put plans in place right to to uh to kind of understand what can happen in your restaurant and prevent that from happening. So you, you know, you have your mechanical engineers in place for your mechanical piece of equipment, your refrigeration, your, your hood exhaust and your ducts and things of that nature. So you, you partner with great vendors and, and I don't want to call them vendors. I truly call them partners, right? Uh, you partner with those, those great people and, 
and they kind of help you. They, they are your lifeline to making sure that your restaurant is running efficiently at all times. Okay, so I'm gonna pause for one second. All right, so being proactive. So that's how, how you stay on top of the nonstop facilities management for Shake Shack. I like it. I, I think it's, it's great. If we're not proactive in our industry, you know, we're behind the eight ball, we have a foot right. going down and that's, that's just not ideal. So it's not a good thing, Mike. It's definitely not a good thing. So let me let me ask you, let me ask you, Terrell, what are yeah. you curious about right now? Um I'm curious about the state that we're in, right? As a country. Um, and what that what does that look like for my kids as they continue to grow and what the future looks like. Um also curious about what is the new norm looks like, right? So for as you know, public gathering places like Shake Shack and, you know, other restaurants and entertainment places. What does that look like for our kids in the future? And how do we kind of make that our norm? So th those are the things that I would say I'm most curious about. Yeah, so you would say, you know, the state of our country right now is very much in flux. And overall, right. I mean, we, we could say the country needs to work a little bit on being better, right? You know, we... We have the, the Black Lives Movement right now. We have the civil unrest. We have this pandemic going on. Right. And, you know, people are fighting over whether they want to wear a mask or, or not. Right. And there's all these just social issues and people are getting so, so aggravated against each other. And, you know, what, what does that look like in, in five, 10 years? I think we're moving in the right direction. I think, I think we're going to come out of this in the five, 10 years with a better understanding and, and just the country will be more unified because I think right now we're very divided. Right. I agree. I, th I definitely think we'll be more unified, more in line with each other. I think there's going to be a empathy that, e that ero evolves from this, or what, you know, what we're dealing with right now. Um, and I think that's going to help push us forward and ultimately be better. And I think we, we all need that. Uh, you know, I, I relate back to when you were a kid and maybe you play, I'm sure you played sports. Did you play uh, little league when, when you were growing up or, or some sort of. Uh, uh, yeah, I did play basketball, football. Uh, only played one game of football. I just didn't like to get hit too hard, but when we talk about that, the different. Yeah. Time. I wasn't even allowed to play football because my dad <laughs> got hit too hard too many times. But so my point is when I played baseball and you know, they started coming out right around when I was in little league, uh, the participation trophies and everyone was, really uh, up in arms about that because they wanted to, uh, you know, kids should learn how to win and lose gracefully. And there's, I think there's a, a good point on both sides of the, of the scale with that. But I think what, what is happening is like the younger generation that grew up in the time when everyone got a little trophy, everyone was more unified is starting to, uh, you know, become young adults and, and, you know, in their, in their late twenties and thirties. And I think that is going to grow into our population and, start to take over from the right. current population that's in power that was more about competition and, and aggressively you know, going against your opponent, whoever that was. So uh, that's just my, my personal opinion, but I think at the end of the day, it's going to make us more unified and be, be better as a country within the next uh, decade or so, hopefully, I, right? So. I, I think so. I think we're gonna be trending in the right direction. There's, there's a few pieces that need to be moved. Uh, in the puzzle to make it all fit, but competition is great. I just wanted to kind of piggyback off what you just said. Competition is great, but but I I think that understanding that that you don't have to always win. You just have to put your best foot forward, right? That's that's what we should be trying to instill into our children, which is the new generation. Um, and and you know these are the, the kids that's going to be running our country one day, right? So yeah, you, you want to you are in. Uh, retirement right. homes <laughs> yeah i'm close there as it is <laughs> uh you, you got me by you got me by a little bit but i'm right behind you so <laughs> you so just had to throw that out there right mike <laughs> it, i did i did i always like to point out the people that are that are my elder statesmen when when they come on the show so <laughs> you also mentioned uh you know what the what the gatherings are going to be like in the, in the short-term future what what is that how has that affected shake shack and like how have you rolled with that and what are you doing to be better about about the restaurant capacities currently so shake shack you know which was birthed 
by Danny Myers. It was his brainchild. Um, and it, it was, he, he brought that idea as a public gathering place, right? He brought that idea, Shake Shack would be a place that all people of all walks of life can come to. And what, like, what's better than having a nice cold, a nice, a nice hot burger with a nice cold beer, right? And, and sit in the park. Nothing. You know, while your kids play. Maybe right? a shake instead of a beer, but nothing. Well, uh, you know, maybe a shake. Well, depending on who it is, but right. <laughs> but 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 yeah. So I, I think that I think that that's what we have to look at, right? And 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 understand what does that look like for us for Shake Shack in the future. Our first restaurant that we fully erected is in the park. It's Madison right. Square Park. You know, since then we went to these closed dining rooms and patios. So does it look like we're going to increase the patio size, you know, so more people can eat outside or you know, close the dining room smaller? You know, that I don't know. That's above my pay grade. But I think everyone is looking at that. Got it. I like it. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, even out here, um, same thing that in California, and we are lucky enough to have good weather most of the year. Um, the patio, it's all about patio dining at this point. So right. they're getting really creative with where to put, you know, the parking lots are now becoming beer gardens. So right. it's, it, is, it is a crazy time. So let's go to the next question here I got for you here, Terrell. What motivates you to be better? Um, first question, first answer that come to mind is my children, right? Because I mean, this is the reason why I get up each and every day, right? To supply and, supp and provide for them, my wife and my children, um, my faith, right? And, and I have an innate characteristic, I think, to want to help people and serve people. Um, that, that's, I mean, those are the, the I think those are the, the, the points that I would make to that. Yeah, I mean, those are great ones. I, I do not have children yet. Uh, I'm hoping to one day join you as, as a, a father in fatherhood, but... Uh, you know, that's, that's a couple years down the road, but I can only imagine what, it, what it's like to wake up every day and just know you, you're providing for the, the, the little ones that are like mini yous. And right. the right. world needs more mini Terrells, that's for sure. So I think so. Well, no, hold on. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have enough, enough in my, uh, in my tribe already. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So, and then you mentioned your faith. So you, you said you wanted to, um, it have this innate reason to help help people does that get derived from your faith is that something that that's um, instilled in you or is that just Terrell being Terrell I think that's just me being me I, I, you know even you know my younger years in life I, I always wanted to help people right I always felt felt a bit of gratitude and gratification of of helping someone else and seeing a smile that you could probably could put on that person's face right and 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 not necessarily about the thank yous or the accolades of it all um but but it just it makes me feel good like it, it allows me to to sit back and say i did something good for someone today yeah i i mean i can totally relate to it uh, i when i started branded group you know i've told the story a, a bunch of times is uh, you know, there's a big hole in my heart and what kind of legacy was I leaving on this planet other than, you know, turning a profit. And uh, right. we started doing our, our service work with um, Habitat for Humanity. You know, we built over 12 houses over the last uh, five years with them. And we've, you know, rolled that into uh, some other initiatives with uh, Orange County Coast Keepers. Uh, and, and we, you know, started doing some beach cleanups for, we've been doing beach cleanups for them, but we've started, you know, solidifying that relationship as well. And it's, like you said, it's just ser serving and, uh, helping. It really just makes your, your heart happy. It makes my heart happy. I'm assuming it's the same thing for you, right? It does. It truly does, man. Um, so th those are all good things. I think if everyone touch into their inner selves to see what they can do better and be better, uh, I think the world, the world would, would gravitate to that and we kind of can like turn the direction, turn the tides and it'd be a lot more happy people in the earth, right? It'd be a lot more smiley faces instead of frowns. So, uh, I mean, and we just I, have to touch on that. I you know I totally agree with you. I, and I, I got to say, when I went to college a uh, uh, long, long time ago, I joined a fraternity and that was part of our um, being in the fraternity. Every year we had to do a certain amount of philanthropic work 
And when I remember being, you know, 18, 19, 20, and I'm like, man, I don't want to go clean this yard up. I don't want to, <laughs> you know, I, and I did, I did my service work with Habitat for Humanity uh, in Lynchburg, Virginia. And I was just like, right. I don't want to do this the first time. And then I started doing it and I was like, wow, like that, that felt great. And I had never, I never grew up. My, my, my parents weren't like, you know, you need to do um, volunteer work to, to as, as a child, it was never anything. I never got in trouble where I had to do it. So once I finally did it and I got a taste for it, it was just, you know, that feeling, that elation of being able to help someone. So I guess what I'm trying to say long windedly is your point is correct. If, if that was something that everyone had to do, and try it out because if you you know my my point of view is probably a lot of other point of views at 18 years right. old like i don't want to i don't want to do that and if you get it instilled into the, the the youth at a young age and they're all growing up doing service work they get that great feeling and the world would right. be a better place a lot more smiles so i agree i definitely concur with that sir well thank you so we've we've talked about what motivates you to be better now I'd like to know what are you doing to be better for yourself to yourself? Um, continue to practice humility, right? Um, continue to have remorse, right? Continue to have empathy. Um, continue to try to be the best version of myself in those perspective fields. Um, and hopefully I give off that to other people. So, um, I, I don't do a lot of like some people use exercise, you know, to be better, right? Some people walk, some people jog, you know, think, I think me to be better is, is, is just trying to be the best version of who I'm, who I am already. So continue to be, you know, humble, continue to have a sense of humility, you know, empathy and, and respect and live by the code of honor and dignity. I, I like everything you're saying. I mean, humility, that's a great one. It's, you know, it's, it's something that we could all use a little bit of, uh, you know, just, right. I, I find myself, um, empathy as well. I find myself sometimes, you know, driving or, or waiting in line somewhere and I'm getting a little testy because my patients are running thin and it's like, you know, someone's not, they're taking a little too long do it in my opinion. Right. And that doesn't really right. mean much, but it, it, I did take a deep breath and practice empathy who knows what that person's going through a little humility like take it easy so i think if everyone did instill these into themselves that you just said humility empathy a little humbleness we could again be in a better place so we can be better uh, quick story let me just let me just double down on this uh, i have a quick story about absolutely this. So, i'd love to hear it to, <laughs> to your point right so i was in line at getting uh something to eat at a, at a restaurant fast food restaurant and it was like really, really long in my mind. I'm like, okay, what, what are they taking? I'm thinking from a restaurant facilities perspective, right? What are they taking, Tom? Do they have a, a grill that's down? That's why it's taking so long. But so I, I, I get to the window to pay for my food and I didn't realize it at the time, of course, but the company that, the, the, the restaurant that I was at was, uh, they, they had someone with autism. They were training someone with autism at the window. So this young lady was, she was slower than what I would have liked at that time. But after the fact, I realized why it was coming out so slow. And you know how bad I felt? I didn't say anything to her, but in my mind, I'm like cursing whoever is at, at the window out. Right. It's like to the window. That forced me to take a look at myself and say, you, man, you need to take a chill pill, right? You need to humble yourself. You don't know what someone else is going through in life but you're just in a rush and you're worrying about what you want in life and what you, you want it now. It's yep. like the microwave state that we're in. Right. But so I, I felt crushed. I, I truly did. I felt bad and I had to like kind of check myself and, and realize slow your roll. So. I mean, I, I think you nailed it. We're, you know, you called it the microwave society. Uh, it's, I always say it's the instant gratification society. Like you want it yesterday you know yep. yesterday's not fast we want it yesterday and yesterday's not fast enough and to your point i mean look at that they're they're trying to make a difference in this young lady's life and they got a program in place to to help her you know be able to, to function in society and you got you know i don't think you really did anything wrong other than you were getting all upset in your head which is the same thing that i do and, and you know now the empathy, the humbleness, the humility. So definitely set in. 
I, I like it. I like, I like that. that this happened to you. I'm glad that you uh, learned from your, from your mistakes. <laughs> so <laughs> I did. I truly did. So we, we've talked about being better to yourself. I would like to know how are you being better professionally, especially right now? What are you doing? Um, You're working from home. You know, you got, you're still watching uh, TV. That's what I'm, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, I will say, you know, the last few months, I'm not a TV guy, but the last few months I have watched so much TV because I, I watch more movies, but I've watched so many right. movies, so much, so much TV. And I'm just like, uh, not, uh, like, I, I, I just want, I want, I want to get back to normal. But anyway, that's side note. Right. I will say guys, grocery games is like my new, like guilty pleasure. I, I will watch oh, this really? cooking, grocery shopping, supermarket sweep show. And I just like Guy Fieri, but anyway, <laughs> enough about that. So how, how are you being better to yourself professionally? Um, so I think for me, self-educating, right? I, 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 I took on a task on my own, um, wanting to learn um, NFPA codes, local codes anyway. So, which is... So tell the audience what NFPA local codes are. National Fire Prevention Association. So these are the local codes that the fire department uses when they're coming into restaurants to check your duct, your hoods, your cooking equipment, your range, you know, things, things like that. So... And that can shut you down immediately if, the, if you don't Oh yeah, man. If, if you're not in line with, with the requirements, um, you can get a violation. First one is just a a warning, right? The second one is like anywhere between one to five thousand dollars. After that, they can say, "Okay, we're gonna red tag your whole entire building. We're gonna red tag your equipment, and and you have to shut down until to whatever the issues are is resolved." Well, and let me just pause you for a second and ask one more question: If you're the facilities manager and you get a violation, I I gotta guess that your your boss is not happy with you, and that comes down on your shoulders, right? Um, it does. So my boss is not happy with me. The, the, our CEO and CFO and, you know, all the executives not happy because this is money that we're just giving away. Right. So mm-hmm. it's, it's my responsibility to, 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 to make sure all equipment is functioning as designed, right. Efficiently, there's, there are no issues and we're providing a good service facilities wise to, to the, to the shacks and ultimately it can provide a good service to, to our guests. Well, that's, I mean, that's definitely being better professionally. You, you're taking the initiative to just get down into the weeds and learn even more about something that gets your restaurants up and running. So I'm sure your boss and, and CEO are happy to hear that you're using your, your downtime wisely. I like that. Well, I try to. I, I think we all have to. There's a sense of, of ongoing education. And I tell my, my son, I have a son that's 18 years old. He's going away to college this year. Oh, wow. And I tell him the 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 education is something that that never stops right you learn you should be able to get up each day and learn something new or if you're not learning something new you're perfecting or getting better at something you learned the day before it, it should be an ongoing saga i'm going to use the word saga it should be an ongoing thing in your world right so in order for me to be the best facility manager that i can be i need to understand all these codes i need to understand you know the, all the behind the scenes things not just fixing something as it breaks i need you know, I need to be proactive and, 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 and not letting that hat get to that, to that place. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're touching on a subject and I've, I've mentioned this before, uh, a great book I recently read was called Atomic Habits by James Cleary. And that's what he really, the whole book is about diving into getting 1% better every day, you know, and just, if you just take it in small bites, right. Cause you're not going to learn Russian overnight, but if you can, learn a little bit more every day, a little bit more of code every day. You're just that 1% better compounded over the course of a year. I mean, you're 365. I think that's the right math, right? If you're 1% better, it's 365 yeah. better, right? Than you were when you started the year. So, right. Right. so unless it's a leap year, but you know, and that's great advice as a father for your son going away to college, just try to get a little bit better every day. Yeah. I, I really like that. I really like that a lot. So uh, you should, you and audience should check out Atomic Habits, if you get the chance. Highly recommend. I'm going to note that. Good. If you and recommend it, it has to be a good book. Oh, well, I got plenty of good books for you, but we don't have the time. <laughs> we don't have the time to talk about that. But I will say, to your point, um, I've been taking this time as well to learn Spanish. So my fiance is uh, Mexican and her family speaks um, fluent Spanish. And I, I used, I never spoke it fluently, but I've 
taken Spanish on and off throughout my uh, you know high school and college days, right. and then let it go by the wayside for a while. And now I've been taking uh, the app Babbel. I've been learning Spanish so my my goal is one lesson a day and the lessons take between five and ten minutes so it's right. not like we don't have time to do that and it's it's amazing I've been doing it for about three to four months now and we'll go to the carniceria and I can I can order in, in Spanish <laughs> you can read the menu properly I, I can I can read it and I can order in Spanish you know it's it's amazing that's like, good wow, I've made some I've made progress so I, well, I don't think that's really professionally for me but I think that's just about being better you know well it can be what if you have partners that 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 only speak, you know, Spanish, right? No, you this kind is of true. relate to them to some degree. So this is true. Transfer over. This is true. Well, Terrell, this has been fun. We've had a lot of uh, a lot of good conversation. I always end each podcast with the same question. So I'm going to ask you, what do you consider yourself to be an expert at? And what is your best advice to our listeners? on how to be better at said thing? This is an easy one. I can, I can answer that without even like thinking about it. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. I, I am an expert at nothing. Okay. I am a student of life. I am a student of learning. I, I try to acquire as much knowledge and wisdom as I possibly can to help me professionally and personally, right? Um, I don't, I don't claim to be an expert or a subject matter expert or something, but what I will tell you what I can do, I'm a great problem solver. So if you have a problem, I can solve it, or I can point you in a direction to help you get some sort of relief or a resolve for it. Um, what I would tell you know, all, all the guests that are listening to, into this podcast, is just be who you are, right? Be who, you, who, who God made you to be, be who you are understand and be be understanding to people right be understanding to people and 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 whether they have shortcomings whether you know it's something about that person you don't like but sometimes we have to walk a mile in someone else's shoes to truly understand them so always put yourself in someone's shoes and and be appreciative of what you have and what you do well uh i mean that's some great advice to leave the audience with well, don't judge people until you have walked a mile in their shoes is what right. I was always told. Uh, and you know, it's, it's a good lesson to carry forward, forward in life. I've never had anyone say that they're not an expert at anything, but I do love the honesty and, uh, the it's, humility, it's, uh, the humility. There you go. <laughs> and I appreciate that. And listen, I really appreciate you coming on the show today. Uh, this has been fun. Uh, if the audience would like to get a hold of you or would like to look up Shake Shack, how can they do that? Um, you can go to shakeshack.com if you want to look at what our brand looks like and what we are doing and all the different great initiatives that, that the company is putting forth. Um, I think a blast went out last yesterday or the day before yesterday of some sort of a, like a Shake Shack camp, right? Um, I don't have all the details in front of me, but if you go on our website, you'll definitely see what that is and what that looks like. If you want to get in touch with me, you can always reach out to me, tehannashakeshack.com for any questions, concerns, or if you just want to engage, right? Networking is the best way to uh, help build your career. Um, Mike, I'm also on LinkedIn, so you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm not on Facebook or Instagram or anything like that, but my social media outlet is LinkedIn. Great. Well, again, Terrell, thanks so much. And Shake Shack Camp, um, I want to know more about this. I'm going to the website right away. So awesome. thank you listeners for, for tuning in and we will see you next week. Thank you for tuning in. I hope that today's episode inspired you to become a purpose-driven leader in your career or your community. There's no doubt that when we lead with purpose, we can change lives. If you enjoyed today's show, I'd be grateful if you would take a moment to rate us on your preferred listening platform. To learn more about Branded Group's Be Better experience and how we provide industry-leading, on-demand facility maintenance, construction management, and special project implementation, visit us at www.branded-group.com. Be sure to follow us on social media, and you can also reach out to me directly on LinkedIn. Until next time, be better.